Hello. I'm starting to do more videos now. This is a tale of two vehicles. And yes, it will include two Kobe models. Number one model is the Ford GP. Ford General Purpose or Jeep. Yes, it is. It's a Willys Jeep manufactured by Ford. And here's the actual model. With a British Commando. With a Sten SMG pistol. And a sort of German equivalent. No, it's not the Kubelwagen. It's the Horch 901. And you may wonder, what is a Horch? Well, we all know what Audi is. Horch is a parent company or um, founder of Audi. And during the 30s, they made a series of trucks and cars. And this is basically kind of a an early SUV. It's powered by a 3.8 liter V8 engine, and it is all terrain capable. Well, let's go into the details of both. I'll show you the instruction manual from the Horch. Yes, I do have the price of I paid $22. I bought this from Brickmania. And the Ford Jeep also came from Brickmania. Bit less at $18.99, but ooh, I'm gonna get better technically at least. I don't have more time to do this. A small instruction book. Why did I build these? Aside from just because I like building the models. The newer tank models that I want are not available yet. It's, it's hard to get Kobe models. You gotta get them online or buy them from some other means or you go to Brickmania and whatever Brickmania has you buy. Well Brickmania had these so I bought these. Alright let's start with the Ford GP. When the Willys Overland Jeep was created other manufacturers had to manufacture the general purpose vehicle. Um, Ford did did that. I'm looking at my notes here for a second. Um, and Ford and Willys both both mass produce this on a humongous scale. They all use the same four cylinder engine. It's a 2.2 liter, 134 cubic inch inline Willys with 60 horsepower. Not a lot of horsepower considering I had a 2.2 liter, four cylinder twin cam in my older Saturn view and I had 143 horsepower. Big step up. Well, this I believe is only a single overhead cam. This is basically the Jeep that you see in World War II up until the 1950s, 60s when Ford made their own general purpose thing. They called it the M-U-T-T, Mobile Utility, MUT for short, but basically it's a Jeep. But this is the original World War II Jeep. It does have U.S. markings on it, and like I said, it's got a British Commando. Thousands and thousands of these were produced. Uh, we use them. The, the British use them. The French, um, um, Chinese, Soviet Union. But they were tough. They were easy to drive. And they were easy to repair. And basic, like I said, basic um, Willys engine in it. Four-cylinder engine. And, I mean, they did the job. And... These are still drivable today. I mean, if you can find one that's in good shape, you can restore it. Very simplistic mechanically, but very rugged and strong vehicle. Now, on the German side, they had the Kubelwagen. If you watch World War II movies, the Kubelwagen is basically a Volkswagen. They remade it as the Volkswagen thing in the 70s, the weird panels and stuff. But there were other vehicles, namely ones like this, the Horch 901. Um, Horch, I'm trying to look at my notes here. He, um, was an engineer designer involved with Auto Union. Auto Union is Audi. This is one of his designs. And this vehicle, the maximum speed is about 50 miles an hour, but it has a 3.8 liter V8, which puts on a whopping 89 horsepower. Almost as bad as my 1980 Volts Cutlass 
which had a 260 V8 that put out 105 horsepower, but we won't get into that. The horsepower wasn't great, but this was a fast vehicle. I mean, they used to take these, they were able to drive them on the Autobahn. It had a canvas cover on it, and it basically did the same thing a Jeep did. It was a four-wheel drive, off-road or on-road vehicle for scouting and for um, uh, recon, reconnaissance units. And these were produced as such because that's what they wanted them for. And I'm just looking at the back of this here. Let's give you more detail. There you go. They used them in North Africa. They used them, oh, all throughout Europe. And these are kind of like a, like a pr prime vehicle. Because they had a V8 engine, they were pretty durable. And they are pretty quick. I don't know the top speed of it. Let me see if I, um, 50 miles an hour. I guess in late 30s, early 40s, it's kind of a, a, a big thing. The roads weren't available, except with the exception of the Autobahn, to drive fast. The way we do in the United States and in Europe now, the roads are kind of crummy. Kind of like roads in Chicago or out, outstretched Illinois that are all chopped up and, and pieces of junk and are so bad that you need either a pickup truck or an SUV to be able to navigate them and drive them without damaging your vehicle. That's what these are like. I would consider this more, this, this Horch, because it has car-like stuff to be one of the first SUVs. But then, because of its capabilities, and like I said, a V8 engine, a very durable, basically an Audi V8 engine, um, that is in a very competent and, and useful vehicle. And they use these as scout cars, um, I don't know if Rommel had one in North Africa as a, as, a, as a staff car, but they were very easy to maintain, and, and, and they held themselves together well. You do see, like, design-wise, it has some of the 1930-ish stuff with the headlamps being out on the outside. Um, radiators on the top, open. And it's just, it has that old-fashioned design on it, but... In um, defense of the Germans, if it's not broke, don't fix it. I mean, everything is dependable. It's going to go out. It's going to work. It's going to do its job for you. Like I said, these things are pretty good off-roading. I mean, they were capable. They had a range of 267 miles. And I guess rather than the air-cooled engine that's in, in the Kuba wagon or the Schwimm wagon, that's a um, seagoing version of the Volkswagen. Let me build a model of that. It's aquatic version, the amphibian. These are bad vehicles. I mean, they did their thing, and they performed well. Uh, this one, if you're interested in more specifics of the model, does have a, have a figure. It comes with it. Um, there's also a... It's in there. I don't want to drop it out. Uh, there's a, a MP40 submachine gun, and... You would have seen these in commonplace in, in World War II. In fact, I saw a movie one time where there was a convoy in France trying to escape the Americans, the British, and the Canadians. And they had these, a couple of these in there, kind of like scout car and carrying um, officers of the unit. Now, compare that to this Jeep. This Jeep with this four-cylinder had a top speed of 60 miles an hour. Um... Mechanical simplicity, I think a Jeep would have been better with a four-cylinder versus a V8. I don't know if it's a flat V8 or if it's a 90-degree angle V8, like modern ones with a kind of angled and stuff. But, I mean, they could be like a modern, but just the horsepower just wasn't there. But these were pretty quick if you drove them on a the road, the Horch. But they were dependable. They were easy for the mechanics to maintain, and they served the Wehrmacht well, as did the Jeep. The Jeep is still here. And like if you're in the military vehicles, especially like the Jeep, um, you can't find some of these used. And they're very mechanically simple, easy to put together and fix and stuff. And not bad. Own piece of history that's drivable. Um, difficulty with the build? Not at all. There's smaller parts. You go at a slower pace. They're actually very nice when they're done. And I'm, I'm kind of happy with it because... I have so many tanks and planes, it's good to have other vehicles along with to kind of go with what you're doing. Basically, that's all I have with these. I have finally completed the F4U Corsair. In fact, I'll show you the box. I'm just waiting to um, 
fiddle with it a little bit more. It's better than the other Corsair in terms of detail size. It has the same quirky thing with the folding wings. The wing locks come off. Let me just snap them back on. I can't get the missiles to work on it. I tried and tried. They pushed the panels uh, the, on the top parts of the wings off. I looked at a few peop other people that built them. I'm going to try what placement of them the way this one of the other individuals did. If that don't work, I'm just going to... But later today, I will do a video on the Corsair and, and show it. Because if you want to buy a Kobe plane, detail-wise, it's, it's a very nice plane. As is the P-39s that they released and the P-47 Thunderbolt that I built. But I'll show you. I'll make a video. I'm going to keep this one under 12 minutes. I'm trying to make these a little shorter, too. I hope you enjoy this and found it interesting. I'm going to try to make the next one not as awkward. And I'm also going to start doing something else. I... I like to collect pens, so I'm start going over pens with people too. If you're in a fancy ball um, writing instrument, that's about it. You have a nice day. Enjoy the weekend, and I will get back with you later with another video.